people, the Muslims even, they're one of three stances on real sorcery, on magic. One, they feel, not that they disbelieve in it, they know it exists, but they feel like because I make dhikr, because I read the Qur'an, because I make the five salat, that's not really something I have to worry about. That's for the weaker people who don't make dhikr. That's for the people who don't read the Qur'an, don't pray. They're always going to be troubled and tried with those things like magic. But as for me, I'm, I'm pretty much safe. And the scholars, they do say that one of the things that keeps you away from the plots of magicians and their harms is dhikr, reading Qur'an, obedience to Allah in general, and so on. But where's the flaw in this thinking? I'm okay, I'm safe, I don't have to worry about magic. It's for people who are weak in religion and so on. What's the flaw with this line of thinking? What do you think, Mateen? There's a real fatal flaw in this thinking. All right, Mustafa? That's a good answer, by the way. Jazakallah khair. Tayyib. They think they're safe. The reality is... We have indications that even, no matter how pious you could be, you're not safe. What's the indication? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had magic put on him. Labid ibn al-A'asam al-Yahudi. He put a magical spell on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you think he was weak in dhikr? His obedience wasn't up to par? Or there was a flaw in his religion? Absolutely not. Atqa nas wa akhshahum lillah. The most pious of the people and the most fearful of Allah. Of all of the people, magic affected him. And that is a lesson for you and me, for everyone, that it is a real thing, yuttaqa. It's something that is to be, protection is to be sought from. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Surah Al-Falaq مِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْأُقَادِ you, you are commanded by Allah Ta'ala to seek refuge with the Lord of the daybreak from one of the things in the surah is نَفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْأُقَادِ Yeah? The... Witches who blow on knots. They are magicians. So then the Prophet ﷺ instructed us to eat in the morning something that protects us from magic. What? Dates. What kind of dates? Ajwa dates. There's like 50 varieties of dates. Yeah, Ajwa dates. The scholars, they say, Ajwa dates from Aliyah, from a place in Medina. Or Ajwa dates from Medina in general. Thirdly in rank, Ajwa dates from anywhere. Fourthly, if you don't find Ajwa dates of any class or kind, they're like a darker date, black, more dry than they are moist, of a medium size of a date, medium to large size. If you don't find any three varieties of Ajwa, then dates in general. So it's not a necessity that you order those Ajwa expensive dates and those are the only things that will protect you from magic. Rather, the scholars say dates in general share in that attribute that they are protection from two things, poison and magic. And the sunnah for ajwa dates is to eat seven dates, when? One time? Every single day. To eat seven dates every single day for that day. So then, it's not something you can afford to do if you're going to order the ajwa dates from in Medina. Can you afford to eat seven of those every single day? Most people couldn't afford that. So then in the absence of those dates, the scholars, they say, any dates, seven of them every morning, will protect you from magic and from poison. If I go to the other side of the scale, I said Muslims are between two sides of the scale as it relates to magic. The other side of the scale is to believe that any harm that befalls you, you know, a pain that you just feel in your knee now, that's someone putting magic on me. And my back ache yesterday, that must have been someone putting magic on me. Or the ayin. Someone put the ayin on me. Or someone's jealous of me. And every harm that he faces in life, he lost his job, someone put magic on me. My wife's not happy with me. We're going through difficult times. I might divorce her because someone put magic on us. And they speak about the harms and the trials they face in life almost with certainty that it's the result of people putting magic on him. What's wrong with this side of the thinking? And they say to someone who says, how do you know it's magic and where are you getting this from? He says, don't you believe in magic? Don't you believe magic is real? And he questions that you maybe deny the reality of magic. What's the flaw in this kind of thinking? 
too extreme. Yeah, it's obviously an extreme, but where's the flaw at? Why is it too extreme? Okay. So number one, he's speaking without knowledge. How do you know that the harm, you have an, a pain in your knee, or you fell, or you have a pain in your back, or your wife wants to leave you or something like this? How do you know that's because of magic? Things have their reasons. Magic is, first of all, it's called sihr because it's khafi. It's hidden, it's not easily detectable. How do you know that's magic? Your wife can genuinely be unhappy with you. You know, and then people will ignore the obvious reasons that are causing problems in their lives and go to unknown, unclear things like magic and hasid all of the time. It's magic or it's jealousy or the ayn has been placed upon me. Number one, it's speaking without knowledge. Number two, it's su'udhan bil muslimin. It's thinking poorly of the Muslims all of the time. Those people who say everyone's putting the ayn on me all of the time. Who are you? Why, are you? Why do you view yourself as so pious and so enviable? that everyone's putting the ayin on you or trying to do magic to you. And what is your opinion of the Muslims in general that that's your default that you go to, that they're doing magic on me? So people can be between these extremes of one, nearly denying it or not really thinking that there's any reason to worry about it or, t or seek protection from it, to the other extreme of thinking that all harms are from magic that someone must be putting on me. The middle course is there are evils in this life that only affect us by the permission of Allah, and we take the legislated steps to protect ourselves from them. We don't speak decisively about them, but we take that middle course, and Allah Ta'ala knows best.